morning. Morning. And welcome to the to the trial on this grey morning. This is come by not be shining like five but it will shine in here. So welcome. We welcome today the Leo service, Mr Jim Hodgkinson, who, as he nearly always says whenever he comes here from over the hill at St John's. Could I do bring you greetings from uh, my lot who are meeting uh, around now, St John's Methodist Church in Holwich. My uh, call to worship today comes, and this will ring bells for a few of you who are well aware of what I did for a living all those years ago. Our call to worship comes from a physics textbook. <laughs> <laughs> and so I open it to the flyleaf, which reads like this. And he exists before everything. And all things are held together in him. It's a quote from the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1 and verse 17. What a surprising thing to find in a physics textbook, isn't it? Now I do want to uh, read to you the whole of uh, that particular passage, because it's so relevant to what we are about to celebrate on this particular day. So this is uh, the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, and I'm going to read from verse 15. There are words that you will, I'm sure, remember really well. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And then from the physics textbook, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church, he is the beginning of the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile himself to all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. A great hymn of faith from the early church that presents us with Jesus, the crucified Jesus, in a cosmic setting. And that's why we are singing this particular hymn as our first hymn. Because this hymn begins with that same cosmic setting. Sing of a God in majestic divinity, seeding the heavens with numberless stars. Let us sing in praise of God.
That doesn't pray. Great God, we rejoice to be part of your mysterious and beautiful universe. And we thank you for our birth on this lovely blue planet. We worship you as the maker of everything that exists, all that was, all that is, and all that is to come. We thank you that you have breathed into us the gift of life, and that you have not made us to be alone. And so we praise you for the gift of one another, and for the smiles given and received as we walked in here this morning, for calling us into communities of people to find ways of living in harmony and peace. But we come also with a degree of shame about what we have managed to make of your world. And most of all, that we have spoiled by our human greed and envy, that sense of belonging to one another for which you created us. So we come seeking forgiveness, generous and challenging God. And we know that in Jesus our Lord, that forgiveness is freely offered. So give us the grace to accept the forgiveness you give us. In the name of Jesus. And we cry of wonder, celebrating how you came to our world in Jesus Christ, born among us in poverty and danger, sharing our brokenness and showing us the way to true life, then suffering and dying for us upon the cross, for our forgiveness and the healing of the nations, and rising again on that day of mystery and wonder where a new world began and hope was reborn. For all these things we praise you, great and wonderful God. May our worship today here honour you. Lift high the name of Jesus and draw us closer to one another, to your glory and praise. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now I'd like uh, little ones and youngsters, whoever would like to come, to come and join me on the carpet. Come and find out what I've got in here. And I'll join you on the carpet. Any more? Come on, there's lots of space. Yeah, come on, that's it. I like to see sprinters. <laughs> Somebody else coming. Yeah, good. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, gather round and we'll see what's in here. <laughs> Got that in. Now then. Oh, I see it. What's that? It's a picture. But what's the thing itself? It's more than a picture. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Yes. Tell me. I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. And the clue is when I fold it down. Oh, I know. Oh, you know it? I can't It's a calendar, yes. So here we've got a calendar. And the thing is, Today is somewhere 
at the end of here, and so it'll be soon time to turn it over. And when I turn it over, we'll almost have run out of months. We'll be into December, and then it will have to be New Year after that, and I'll need a new calendar. Now then, just listen. Now there are lots of different years, and there is a year that begins in September. Ah, what year begins in September? You want a clue? Let's have a clue on the screen. Have a look on the screen. Oh! You go back to school. You go back to school, exactly. Now there is another year that begins in September. Ooh. And I've got another clue. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at this clue. At friends. The next one. Pizza. Pizza. Now listen to this because the chances are you won't know. Pizza. Another year that begins in September is the Methodist year and what that means is that any of our ministers who are going to move to a different town they all arrive in their new town for September and I want to bring greetings to some of you who will remember a minister by the name of Derek Oldham I saw him on Friday called in He's just moved to Lancaster in September and he said we've got a lovely manse in the wrong place. <laughs> but he's miles from his churches. Now then, I have another clue for you for a different year. And this different year begins on the 21st of January. You're right, it's the year of the rat. Now, what country has years that they name after animals. Does anybody know? I know. Know. I know. Is it China? I know. Is China? Is it the biggest? Is it? Yes, it is. The Chinese New Year will start on the 25th of January. Now, how many of you like to surprise people? Do any of you like to give people a surprise? Do you? I hope you do. Well, I want you to give people a surprise next, next Sunday morning. And when you come next Sunday morning, I want you to find an adult that you know. You ready to listen to me now? Find an adult that you know and go up to them and wish them Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Not now. Happy New Year. Next Sunday morning. Next Sunday. <laughs> Next, Sunday. <laughs> Next, Sunday. <laughs> Next Sunday morning. Not now. <laughs> because next Sunday will be the church's new year. And that's because we start to look forward to something next Sunday. Are you starting to look forward to something? Christmas, yes! And so, and so, here's the next clue. Have a look on the screen. So that's what we're looking forward to, isn't it? The baby Jesus, yes. Now then, I just want to tell you something. You were, you were, you were expecting before you actually arrived. Would you just listen? You were expected before you arrived. And that's what we'll start next Sunday, that we begin to expect the coming of the baby Jesus. And so we'll start to think back to places in the Old Testament where the prophet said that he would be coming, and so on and so forth. And so today is actually the last Sunday and we spend the whole year, starting in December, we spend the whole year looking at the life of Jesus. And so on this last Sunday, 
we think of the very end of Jesus' life on earth and his life beyond earth, beyond his resurrection. Today, we think of Jesus as the King of Heaven, the King of Kings. And I want you now to help us to sing King of Kings, Majesty, and use the flags that we've got so that you can help us all to celebrate King of Kings, Majesty. The words will be on the screen. Thank you. Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 1 to 4 and then 5 to 8. The righteous branch. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture declares the Lord. Therefore 
This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteous saviour. So then, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. But they will say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of Israel up and out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them. Then they will live in their own land. Psalm 46. If you can please replace a bond with the words in bold. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved. And though the mountains tremble in the heart of the sea. Through the waters verge and swell. And though the mountains sway as the tower is there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the dwelling of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations are in uproar, and the kingdoms are shaken. But God utters his voice, and the earth shall not sway. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord. What destruction he has wrought on the earth. He makes wars to cease in all the world. He shatters the bow and snaps the spear and burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord. What destruction he has wrought upon the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord. What destruction he has wrought on the earth. Our hymn is number 247. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. 247. Would you like to stand if you're able, please? <laughs> I dance. 
above him which read this is the king of the Jews one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him aren't you the Christ save yourself and us but the other criminal rebuked him don't you fear God he said since you are under the same sentence we are punished justly, 
for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you truly, you will be with me today in paradise. Extraordinary words. This is a central story, of course, and we find roughly the same account in all of the Gospels. But in this particular version that Luke has for us, he adds a couple of details. It's interesting that there were two criminals crucified with Jesus, one on each side. Do you, does your mind go back, as mine does, to that occasion when, was it James and John, asked if they could be next to Jesus, one on the right and one on the left, when he comes into his kingdom. There's that old adage, isn't there? Be careful what you ask for. And then we have, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. was Molly Russell. Does that name mean something to you? Yeah. Took her own life not long ago at the age of 14. She too suffered abuse and taunting on social media and in parts of the dark web that actually encouraged her to take her life. And her father had been over to America to talk to the bosses of social media, to persuade them to do something about bullying on the net. And of course it's paralleled in the life of schools. And all of us in our time have seen bullying taking place. This experience of Jesus being abused upon the cross is a part of the human life that we experience around us today. Jesus baited as the saviour who couldn't save himself. It involved the people and their rulers, the temple authorities, pointing out to him that he seemed to claim to be the Messiah, the chosen one of God. Save yourself. The soldiers of Rome. It was Augustus, the emperor who was alive at the time when Jesus was born, who was the first of the emperors to declare himself to be a god, to be a saviour, because he brought peace, the Pax Romana, the oppressive peace of the Roman Empire. And then finally, we have the fellow convicts, one of them crucified beside Jesus, who joins in, mocking him again. Save yourself and us. Three times. Does that find an echo for you too? The three times that Peter denied his Lord? And here in this case, we have the religious people, the people and their leaders. We have the political leaders, all the Roman Empire encapsulated in those soldiers who were beating Jesus. And the common, ordinary people, the lowest of the law, if you like, they too join in. Three denials representing the whole world. And then the mood changes. Did you notice that? And it's only Luke who gives us the next bit. The mood changes. And the second of the criminals just turns it into something else altogether. The light dawns 
insight comes, and only Luke tells us this bit about the criminal who turned to Jesus, asking to be with him. One of the things that interests me is uh, what you do when you're telling your story. I want you to imagine that you are going to tell your story. Maybe in a 15 or 20 minute talk, or maybe you're going to write it in a little pamphlet or whatever, and you're going to think, what should I put in? And just as important, of course, what should I leave out? To tell a story that will be interesting and perhaps a bit entertaining as well. And your family might help you, might you? And if I were right in mine, my two boys would say to me, Dad, you've got to put in Warwick Castle car park. Because Warwick Castle Park car park is sort of imprinted on who I am within my family. The two boys were in the back of the car, quite small at the time, and we drove into, or right in the middle of the car park, and everybody started to get out, and then I changed my mind. So the doors were slammed again, because I thought, actually we could park near the entrance, and that would be good, wouldn't it? And then the car's right there when you come out. So, so I drove to another spot near the entrance, and just to, they were right to get out of the car. I had another thought. It was such a nice day, and I thought, this car's going to be absolutely roasted by the time we come out of the castle. I'll go and park over there under the street. So we got back in and went to park. Now, I swear, I only changed my mind twice. But over the years, this has become like a fisherman's story, you know? So that would have to go in, my story. And if there were pictures in it, they would have another idea. Oh, you've got to put in. And it would be a picture of me fast asleep in a most unlikely place. So it might, for example, be a picture of me on top of a mountain in the middle of a pile of rocks, fast asleep with my rucksack just pulled up a bit to prop my head up, 40 winks just to regather my own resources to walk down again. Or it might be at the airport when the plane was delayed flat out on the carpet. It's just one of those things I do seem to nod off. <laughs> I think, and it's something that I got from a Methodist professor of divinity, James Dunn, reading one of his books. He pointed out that the gospel writers were not just writing for themselves, but they were writing for the community that they were part of. And so I want you to imagine that when Luke was writing his gospel, that there was some pressure from people around him saying, you've got to put that in. I just want to read you what Luke says at the very beginning of his gospel, he says this. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you've been taught. Luke is telling us that he had some special things that he wanted to tell us. Without him, we wouldn't have the Good Samaritan. Without him, we wouldn't have the Prodigal Son. Some of your favourite stories are only in Luke. And this little bit is also only in Luke. The other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? And then he goes on. Jesus, remember me 
when you come into your kingdom, and gets that wonderful affirmative reply, today you will be with me. And I can imagine that there were people around Luke, writing 50 years after this event, 50 years on from the crucifixion, who were saying, that story speaks for me. I'd like it to be in your gospel. And so it is that this has come down the centuries from that time. That time when the synagogues had been closed to Christians. That time when Rome was persecuting Christians. That time when some Christians were Greeks, some Christians were Jews, some Christians were slaves and perhaps saw themselves reflected in a person such as the criminal who spoke these words. And in a sense, here we have Jesus living up to the label that was above his head. Here we have the strange idea that somehow Jesus was enthroned upon the cross. What an extraordinary idea. And Paul wrote about that. He said the cross for Jews is a stumbling block. For Gentiles it doesn't make sense, it's foolishness. But for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. An unlikely one. Criminal crucified on one side of Jesus is the one who had that insight and the one who gave us that wonderful, wonderful request and reply. In August 1995, I went with uh, a former minister of the church where it used to be in Chorley Old Road, Reverend Martin Skinner, someone who will remember him. And I went to this little village, Taizé, in the middle of France. The brothers there, the Christian brothers, invite young people from all over the world to come and join them for a week. And they allow one or two older folk like me to go and be there as well. But there were 4,500 people under 25, all under one roof, and a few hundred adults. <coughs> And these words in Tezo are said to me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, it just goes on. No. To be with 4,500 young people quietly singing that request was one of the most moving moments of faith in my life. So this mantra set to music, this, this request and that affirmative reply is not just for the thief, nor is it just for those folk who were around Luke and insisting that he put it in his gospel. But down the years, down the centuries, it has been for person after person. For the scholar in his study, spending so much time analysing and looking closely at the word. And then comes to the Bible with a different feeling in his heart and reads these words as part of worship. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Maybe it's for the prisoner coming to terms with what he has done and finally having found the means of grace. Jesus, remember me.
or maybe it's those who were dying, as Jesus was, recognizing that they too stand with the criminal. Jesus, remember me. It's the simple, trusting heart of the gospel, that yearning that is deep within all of us. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It is uh, searching for a hymn that might follow the words that I've just been speaking. And the one that really worked for me is number 277 that we shall sing now. My song is love unknown, my Saviour's love to me. Love to the loveless shown, that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take fail fresh and die? We sing two seconds up.
reason at all that it's not a problem. For those who can, the stewards will know where to find us. consistently surrounds us. So we thank you for that, Lord. And we thank you for all these gifts. We thank you for the gifts that we bring that are not financial, but are what we can do and what we are able to do for you. Accept all these gifts, Lord, and put them to use as you would have us use them, to your glory and for the extension of your kingdom here in this small part of your world. Amen. Amen. And now I'll ask Joe to lead us in our intercession. In our prayers of intercession today, I'd like you to close your eyes and visualise in your mind that you're standing on the bank of a pond which lies wide, still and silent. In your hands you're holding a stone and I want to think of your prayers as ever-expanding circles of ripples caused when you throw the stone out into the middle of the pond. There will be short periods of silence when I'd like you to pray for someone you know or situations you're concerned about within that circle. So let us pray. The stone drops and we see the first circle emerging. In this circle are the people closest to us. Family, lifelong friends, those people who are irreplaceable in our lives. There aren't too many of this first small circle, but we know them well. They're good points and they're not so good points. Their successes and their struggles. Times of enjoyment and times of need. May the gentle spirit of Christ hold them and bring them joy. The circle spreads. Here is a second circle where we find the people we know well, neighbours, people we work with, people we see at church on Sunday. Here also are people we have known in the past who may have moved only by the act of sending a Christmas card each year. People linked by the glorious story of the coming of the Christ child, whose tiny fingers reach out and bring us together 
in his innocence and his love. The circles spread again. Look now at the third and fourth circles. Here are people we know less well, people who we regularly see walking in the street, or when we're out shopping, cheering us with a friendly smile. Here are people who have little to smile about, who are beset by illness or grieving loss, people who we pass huddled on the pavement in makeshift tents or cardboard boxes collapsing in on themselves. There are so many people in these circles, all known to God, who has loved them from their birth. May they be washed over by these circles of prayer and find renewal through the healing power of Christ. The circles spread out to the farthest edges of the pond. Here are the more distant reaches of the world, in places not many of us have experienced physically, places whose stories fill us with sorrow and apprehension. Here are people in dire need of the strength of our prayers, whose lives have been marred by war, or the avoidable march of progress, ejected from their homes and their way of life, a centuries old harmony with nature destroyed to the detriment of both. We pray for the work of the aid agencies and for Christians throughout the world, motivated by the example of your disciples down the ages and the deep belief in your message of salvation. In these far circles, this great expanse of needfulness, may everything be cradled in your love and mercy, our Father God. Now let your thoughts come back to this solid ground on which we stand. And we offer our prayer for the triangle home to such a diversity of people, all of us your children. May we be united in the Holy Spirit, so that this church continues to flourish and grow, a beacon of hope and love to all who look to you, Jesus, source of this body's life, for through you we can come to know the wholeness of God himself and his creative purpose. Lastly, we look at our own hands, empty now of all but love for you, our Lord. And we see this prayer for ourselves. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not count the cost, to toil and not seek for rest, to fight the good fight and not to heed the wounds, to labour and not ask for any reward, save that of knowing we are doing your will. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who is alive and with us today. To you be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 167 in Singing the Faith, Colours of Day. Would you like to stand if you're able, please?
Amen. 